Hello, good evening, and welcome to uh, the third of these web thingies. Um, great to have you with me again. Thank you. It's not quite the same on my own. Uh, before I say any more, I better just check that the um, that the audio is working as always. So if you could just type something into the chat box just to confirm that you can hear me, that would be marvellous. Very good. Thank you, Michael. Good to have you with me again. Um, <clears throat> excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Right. Let's get cracking. Now then, um, <clears throat> this, as I said, is the third of four uh, web TV thingies, live shows, webinars, whatever you want to call them. Um, the first two, if you haven't watched them, uh, there are links around the place. I'm going to add them to the My Gigi's page just for expediency. They they are well worth watching um, in spite of the fact that you'll have to suffer my face and my voice for uh, a couple of hours. Um, the first one talks about mindset and really about um, anybody who's kind of using gold, uh, using a gold subscription has has paid for that privilege and so you you're at least semi-serious about eat one or both of enjoying the process of your betting in, in other words um, enjoying betting on horses as a pastime um, and or making a profit from that wagering activity um, so if you're sufficiently serious to do that then i would certainly recommend you look at the first recording if you haven't looked at it yet um, I think there's some good, some good insights in there about um, you know setting yourself up to succeed, as opposed to setting yourself up to fail. Um, and also um, something that is very poignant for me is recognizing when the likelihood is that I'm going to fail, acknowledging that, being completely fine with that, and um, tightening one's staking belt accordingly. Um, so that's that's worth a watch. That's the first one. The second one uh, is um, is a, a kind of a deep dive into the race cards and the form tabs. And that one is um, is kind of is, is sort of granular. It's bottom up, if you like. It's it's looking race to race, looking for uh, items of interest today, and indeed next in the in the final um, web web show uh, we're going to take a more top-down view and more of a helicopter view um, and see if we can't find some ins via firstly the reports which we'll talk about tonight um, and secondly the query tool uh, which we'll talk about next time um, I'll also do some try, try and pull all the strands together in that last one um, which I think is going to be on the 30th of October That'll be a week today. Um, I will be in Kentucky then for the Breeders' Cup. Um, <clears throat> but that um, timing means I'll be doing it in the afternoon. You'll be doing it in the, um, you'll be listening in around about this time. Um, so <clears throat> one of the wonders of the web is that uh, geolocation is should not be a challenge. Um, that's not to say it won't be. And uh, we should be able to um, to reconvene then for the last one. Anyway, to today. Um, oh, just a couple of points before I go to today. Uh, last time when I was talking about uh, the race cards, um, I did mention some pace stuff. Um, and if I can just get this page to work, I need to share my screen, don't I? I must remember to do that. Uh, let's just quickly do this, hide that go there um, we talked about pace specifically in the context of the all weather um, because we're going to we're going to have uh, the all weather all through the winter and um, there are some some quite strong ins particularly around draw and pace um, this is a less than auspicious beginning um, I am going to go here and look at this one, if I can. So this was a race last night. Um, I've got some 
some issues with Microsoft Edge here, which is um, typical. Anyway, this was a, as you can hopefully see, this was a five furlong race at Kempton last night, naught to 55. Um, that's basement fair. Uh, and in this race, although I can't, oh, I can. Excellent. Um, let me see if I can just get it to actually do something. What I'd like to do is sort by draw, but the um, the thing is not working, sadly. Anyway, you can clearly see in the lead column there is one horse, um, and you can clearly see from the uh, historical pace information up here that lead, horses that lead have a very good record. Um, needless to say, perhaps, but I'll say it anyway, this horse, Little Miss Lily, drawn four, close to the inside, um, with no pace contention around her, uh, made all and won well at 14 to 1. So really just underlining what we said last time about draw and pace. Um, this other tab, which isn't working, and I'm going to give up on that straight away, um, was going to show you Al's Vinder, which was a horse that I highlighted last time. Uh, as being well suited to conditions, but also having um, a, a nice pace set up as well. Um, he also made all and won at 10 to 1. Now, obviously, they don't all win, but, you know, I mean, in in the space of a week or uh, nine days, something like that, we've got two five furlong handicaps at Kempton. Two horses have got out and stayed out, and both of them were double figure prices. Um, I know for a fact. Uh, that gold subscribers back these horses, um, and I, <clears throat> uh, as did I. Spare me a second. Ah, there we are. Um, so yeah, I mean, all very well to after time and gloat, except that we did a bit of before timing, as you'll see in the second, uh, the second show. If you haven't watched that already, and and you know, I really was at pains to. Um, in my opinion, with the possible exception of trainer angles, and that's something that we'll look at in some detail tonight, um, draw and pace on the all weather, particularly in sh in sprint distance races around a turn, um, the, the the front runner has a really significant advantage, and um, you know I've highlighted that a couple of couple of times there in the last week. Um, keep that in mind throughout the winter because it's it's certain to pay its way um that will cover your subscription and some on its own so that's um that's the history now let's get on with tonight's show um, as i've said the reporting stuff is kind of a a top-down view um as opposed to a bottom-up and so we're kind of we're not we're not we're not looking at any particular one of the things that bookmakers want you to do and that's why they sponsor lots of races is they they want you to look at the the feature race as defined by them the big sprint handicap the 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 grade two grade three handicap chase with a million runners um half of them unexposed types who you've got to not just understand the level of their current ability but also try and project how much additional uh capacity they've got to improve and it's um that's a hard job um certainly not something that i've ever been especially good at and i and i have no qualms about admitting that um basically there are enough races of different types that i don't have to worry about that too much um so one of the things that um the reports do for us is they as my mate michael pizzola says they let the bet make you or they let the bet find you so rather than you going looking race to race um or on the suggestion of what whatever the the big bookmaker sponsored event of the day is um these heats are flagged to you by something of note on a report um so we will look at that now i just want to say that tonight this third uh event i i think I, i'd like to think that we're um, we're sufficiently comfortable in each other's company now that I can, I can glug on while I uh, while I chin wag. This is a uh, a Chablis. Um, it's reasonable. I think if you chill white wine enough, you can get away with a multitude of sins. This one's 
it, it wouldn't be the best Chablis I've ever had. Um, equally, it's not the worst. It's certainly a fine uh, liquid companion for tonight's tonight's events. Right, enough waffle. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go. Um, I'm going to. I'm going to. Um, I'm, I'm going to disappear uh, and replace myself with the screen. And I really hope that. Um, I really hope that that browser that I'm using is going to behave itself somewhat better than it was a moment ago. Let's get rid of this one. That was the main miscreant. Um, <clears throat> and we'll start here. So if I just go back to Homey, Homey, here's the Breeders' Cup. Very excited about that. Um, starting to put together quite a lot of content for that, but we'll talk about that another day. Um, the reports we have about 15 reports and they live in various places you can find them from this drop down um, you can also find them if you click on the reports menu item you can find them on that page uh, and finally if you're on the race card page there is a drop down there that you can grab them from as well um, i just want to quickly check that you can hear me okay uh, you can yeah good 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 okay <clears throat> right so um i'm going to talk a little bit about pretty much all of the reports um some of them are quite similar and i'm not going to i'm not going to spend a lot of time um where the where the nuances are not really worth the effort it's my aim to get through this in an hour tonight and i've already blustered for 12 minutes so i've got 48 left um <laughs> if i overrun a bit then um it will only be standard procedure and apologies in advance um a to z report i'm, I'm going to very very quickly talk about this this is as the name suggests uh, a list of today's um, runners and riders in an a to z format um it's sorted by it, standard sort is by time but of course you can sort it by uh, horse uh or by trainer or by jockey or by odds quite interesting sometimes to sort it by odds um and see the shorties that one won that one won that one didn't that one won that one won um uh, i mean it, <laughs> it's not an exciting way to bet but you could put the five in a super yankee and you most days you'd get you get three up you'd probably get half your money back worst ways um and when you get all five in then you might steal a little bit of a profit but as i say <laughs> a pretty un unexciting way to uh, to to steal a living now the class move report which is a new one as the um as the blob there suggests um to be honest i haven't really i haven't really found a way to use this yet uh, i tend to i do use it um so pretty much all of these reports have some kind of a presence on the race card and you you will have noticed if i just open up this um I just opened this race to illustrate this point. You'll have noticed that the um, um, <clears throat> there are, unless you've switched them off, of course, on your My Gigi's page. More of that in webinar two. Um, you'll notice these little arrows that kind of highlight the class or grade direction of travel. So, in the case of Glorious Charma and Chomburi, this is a class five race, and these two guys have dropped three each. So they were both in class two races last time and you can see that there that's the last run was class two and then this is today's run class five um chombori didn't fare that well the other lad glorious charmer did somewhat better uh and he um he won he beat a horse called master matt uh wouldn't you know it and um at the fight as the five to one favorite and it was a, a a classic spencer ride um brilliant jockey um and i won't i won't have another perspective on that all of the data says he's a brilliant jockey um the nature of uh hold up riding is that that you are a hostage to fortune and it's not everybody's tastes if you don't like that you should have checked on the pace tab already and know that the horse is probably going to be held up and um and and devil take the hindmost so um as with everything you know my perspective on accountability um, if you back Jamie Spencer on a hold up horse, know that he is the best in the business in that context, but that any horse that's a hold up horse is has a number of obstacles, physical, uh, uh, literal and um, um, 
uh, not literal to overcome. So um, don't blame the jockey if you back a hold up horse. You should know that it's a hold up horse because we have this pace stuff and uh, and then you get what you get. Anyway, wonderful ride from uh, from uh, Mr. Spencer today. So that's um, that's a class move report. I do uh, I do think the bigger the bigger class drop droppers are um, are interesting. Uh, this was another one that very nearly won today. Russian Realm uh, finished second, as I recall. Thomas Blossom also won, dropping two. Um, so the the the. I guess the the up one down ones are not really of much note, um, but the ones that are making a a more significant uh, descent in class, then they are that they're perhaps worth having a look at. So that is the class move report. Um, I should say actually that for all, pretty much all the reports we've got a today and a tomorrow button, so you can get tomorrow's class movers as well by clicking the tomorrow button, and again you can sort. Um, we have a horse there dropping five grades, uh, which is quite interesting, and another couple dropping four um, at prices. I'm guessing these might be dropping into a handicap uh, for the first or second time out of uh, out of a group race, perhaps with Canal Rock. So um, worth worth a look, worth a second glance. Um, the first one that I want to talk about in a little bit of detail is the shortlist, and it's a, it's a very popular report. Um, for fairly obvious reasons i suppose it's kind of a it's it's a it's a headline report if you like all of the horses that appear on here are here because um they are at least pretty well suited to conditions excuse me while i take a slurp um uh so so basically what we've got here is we've got today's not a classic example actually is the the, the score can be anything from nine to 15. So a line of green scores you 15. Um, there's an explanation down here of, of the scoring system. Um, and a couple of other footnotes to be aware of that um, just because if a horse has run once, for example, under identical conditions and it won, um, it won't appear on, on the shortlist because we demand uh, a greater body of evidence than just a single run. So no flukes here. Um, if a horse is on here, it's 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 proven itself, maybe not consistently, but but certainly more than once or twice against uh, today's conditions. Um, <clears throat> one other caveat with the shortlist: you might notice a differential between the data on the shortlist report and in the instant expert uh, on the actual race page, and the reason for that is because this report is. Uh, is produced at a specific point in time overnight. So we produce it. We actually we produce it um, the afternoon, the day before for the tomorrow content, and then um, overnight, so about four a.m. We we reproduce it. Um, things can happen after that point. So, for example, uh, the going can change, and that and the horse may have a, a less less good or potentially better performance on the revised going um, as a consequence of the going change or for other reasons the field size can change and that can have a bearing on this one um, class course and distance are as they are so they they won't change but going and field size can change and that can have a material bearing on um, so if you see what appears to be a disparity between the short the short list uh, runners and what you see on the instant expert that is most likely the reason why um the final thing i want to say on that is that these days let's just open up a race uh, so you can see what i'm talking about these days we have some filters um we've got a lot more kind of user definition around how you um how you view your data on instant expert so you can select all or handicap only if it's a handicap you can select all race codes or the specific race code uh, you can select win or place you can select all history or the last five two or one years so the shortlist um, is produced against everything so it's produced against the full career history of the horse under all codes 
um, sorry, all race types and all race codes. So in the case of uh, Glenn Amoy Lad here, um, we can see he's got one, two, three, four greens and a red. And I hope <clears throat> you can see that's consistent with um, what we have on the short list. Now, as I say, sometimes there'll be slight variations um, uh, <clears throat> and you need to be aware of that. But there are almost always uh, good reliable legitimate explanations for those those differentials now let's just quickly talk about how to use this content um if you're really really pushed for time then you can bet horses off this list as they are uh glenn and my lad actually won a four to one today um prince de prince de sable was second i'm not sure how pure shaw's got on 545 uh no good um and right about now was a bit disappointing this brainski or brianski has gone into my tracker today um i thought he was given i want to be careful what i say i i, I he, he's a good bit better he finished fourth or fifth uh, and he was never nearer and although his form's over seven and eight furlongs and this was a six furlong race um he traveled he traveled like he'd been a six furlong horse all his life. He wasn't beaten by the pace. Uh, he had loads of run left in him at the finish. And um, it was probably just a misjudgment. But anyway, this guy, um, under similar conditions, ought to go close soon, I think. He's definitely, he's gone in my tracker with comments to that effect. I may have been um, slightly less diplomatic about the ride. I, and I wasn't invested, by the way. I, I, I was... Um, I didn't have a bet in the race apart from place pot, um, but I it was an it was an eye catching ride. Let's say that for, mainly for the wrong reasons. So Brensky was one of three horses that went in my tracker today. Um, right, so that's that. Now tomorrow uh, again, it's a it's a really poor day um, in terms of. Bear in mind that this score can be anywhere between nine and fifteen. Um, 15 is a line of green and nine is well as you can see you can there are there are variations but essentially it's going to be three greens um and a couple of grays or three greens a red and an amber which kind of cancel each other out <coughs> with a one and a minus one um one of the things that's really important about not just the reports but everything actually is not to force things let the bet make you is what old pizzola says he if if it's not there it's not there you know don't 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 try to convince yourself that because a horse is on this list you need to back it right i mean i'm going to come on to another point in a second um but the, the these these horses they might win and maybe you can be more forgiving at the prices but if you've got something that's kind of five to two and it's you know it's got it's, it's got not much better than a middling um, profile for the race, then probably leave it alone unless you, you know, unless you have a look at, you look at this at 5.13 <laughs> and you think, right, I need a bit of action. I'll, I'll have a crack at that. And then, as I've said before, you kind of, you get what you get in that context. Um, the other thing I want to say about this is uh, you'll notice here that there's two runners in the same race here. And also today, um, we had two runners in this race here. Um, the key to the instant expert, as I mentioned last time, uh, and and consequently to the shortlist, is to is to try and get this contrast thing going. Now, if we look at this three ten race, um, oh yeah, I've got it open here. Um, we can see that there's loads of green on here and plenty of amber. Um, that means it's a pretty competitive race and you'd expect it to be it's a class two 20 grand to the winner race you know it's a, it's a good race um for a tuesday afternoon particularly and so you would expect it to be competitive um it doesn't really matter that the horse you know one of the horses flagged in the race won and and arguably the other one should have won that's that's not really that's neither here nor there really the point is that for me anyway I look at a race like this, particularly if I put it on the place tab, um, you see, you know, just 
it's it's like um it's it's like a slice of marmalade on toast there's just orange everywhere it's you know it's really um it's really competitive stuff all of these horses has got some sort of form against today's conditions um again i mean i'd still probably lean towards Bransky. um uh but that's a race that i you know i i, I would eat, happily leave alone and likewise tomorrow we've got these two in the 410 now i haven't looked at this race actually um so we just have a quick look at the instant expert and see see how it looks uh oh my old mate captain peacock this is a again you can see this is a good it's a class two race it's another it's another valuable race there's winners everywhere here it's a really um and lots of trainers in form jockeys in form this is a cracking little race on the face of it um now there's not much data in here because they're all unexposed and most of them have only had a couple of runs in in um in hurdle races so if i put that on all you get a lot more data and if i put it on all codes as well you get flat data as well and if i put the place one on there as well you get even more but you just see that it's just like a wall of green this is like um uh lime pickle on toast <laughs> that analogy is going nowhere fast <laughs> but but anyway it, it very well highlights the, the point that i'm trying to make that the, the there are loads of horses suited to conditions in this this race and it's um particularly for worcester i guess it's their end of yeah it's their series final unsurprisingly this is a cracking race um add into the mix that you've got one two three four five six seven seven horses first time in a handicap um and it's uh well it's for braver players than me so that's that's something to be aware of with the shortlist is that um particularly if you've got multiple horses actually on the shortlist but even if you haven't you should be clicking through to the race to see how competitive a contest it is um again i talked about the the uh the contrast principle last time and um you know i think that's really important to, to keep that in mind um i mean the horse on the shortlist here is loud and clear uh which is there i'm not sure why that's on there oh yeah because i've got to change all this up uh let's try that there we go so now he's got the threes on there but actually the horse that that would interest me there is um up 10 down two um he'd be a more interesting type potentially but again there's a lot of green there and i you know I, if i if i was doing a play spot or whatever i'd put them both in but um from a punting perspective at the price i'd look a bit more deeply at up 10 down two uh, he's got something there that we'll talk about in a minute now um that is the short list on the win part the other thing that i just wanted to touch on is the place one now you'll always get more data on here um uh, because as you've seen when i've shuffled between win and place on the instant expert there's a lot more green uh on the <clears throat> on the on the place side of it though the way i use the shortlist place report is i sort by biggest price first um, and i'm looking for horses that have got kind of an interesting profile at a big price in other words i'm prepared to forgive a lot more if I'm betting a horse at 28, 33, 40 to one. Um, now today, <clears throat> conveniently enough, uh, I don't know how Royal Brave got on in the 310. I don't think he was, he wasn't in the frame anyway. He wasn't in the first four. Um, not even sure how Sunglider got in, got on in the 510. He was off the ticket as well, but this lad Mango Chutney, 33 to one shot, that was, that was placed uh here was third in that newcastle race so um you you do uh, not i won't i won't say often but um quite fairly occasionally um you get one of these pop up actually win at a price like this and fair, yeah pretty often you get you get um horses make the frame at, at these big prices you know i wouldn't be interested at the stuff down here um on a place ticket i mean maybe from a from a place pop perspective again or in exactors and trifectas but in terms of um in terms of having a win or an each way bet 
I want to be at this end of the odd spectrum. And uh, Mango Chutney was a very convenient um, highlighter of that today. Russian Realm was another one. I think it was a bigger price than that in the end. Uh, finished second to his stable mate. Who was that? Um, yeah, Buccaneers Vault. He finished second to him. So that was another one um, from the top end there, although yeah, I'm pretty sure it was 16s, actually. I think it was 16s and 20s there. Um, so that's the short list. We need to crack on. Um, the next on the list is Hot Form. Now, this is a report that looks essentially uh, highlights those races where winners and placed horses have come out in um, in noteworthy numbers. And um, <coughs> excuse me. And um, just on the uh, on the raw data, there's 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 quite a lot in there. It's not really it's not really consumable in that format. Um, the way I set this up is I'm looking for at least five runs. Um, uh, let's say 25% win. So if I just do that, I should get a shorter. A shorter list is one of the slower reports to um, to load up. It's just a lot of data, a lot of crunching going on. Um, so we've got a shorter list now. And what I do then is I would sort by the result. Um, and I'm looking for horses that ran well last time in races that have worked out well since. Um, so in this case, the top horse is a horse called Bradford Bridge, who finished second last time in a race where there have been three uh three winners or three yeah three three wins out of seven runs from the horses from that race since um now he i think he won today but he was sh short enough um yeah he won he was about even money i think uh, so uh, nobody's getting rich at that that price so the fact that <clears throat> the form was good was was pretty well advertised i tend to set this up on the 45 day view uh i think that's about six and a half weeks. I think it's it's the right balance between um, getting a meaningful or a vaguely meaningful amount of data into the the, the runs column here, um, and the form still being sufficiently fresh to for it to be um, for it to be marked up uh, as as worthy of, of following. I hope that makes sense. Right, so here we've got, um, at the top, we've got a horse called Turgeman who won at Ascot last time. The form's working out well. Uh, he won again today. Um, again, not a price. I think he was 8 to 13. Um, so that's not really articulating my point very well. I mean, he did, excuse the term, he did bolt, uh, bolt up. Yes, I was going to use the, the P up word, but he did bolt up and um, he beat another horse that was quite well fancied. In fact, he beat this horse here, Wiretap, uh, and there must have been 10 back to the third, um, eight, eight back to the third. So he won by two and a half with eight back to the third. The form, you know, they were clearly the two class horses in the race and their chance was advertised by um, what, what the runners behind them had subsequently done. Uh, in between is this faithful promise, which has run this evening. 740 probably got the result for that let's have a quick look um most certainly got stuffed because i'm trying to highlight a point uh yeah off the ticket there i think so what's it called faithful promise yeah no good sadly um uh and then we've got our Bradford Bridge here concierge was another one here that's interesting this horse won at eight to one at Newcastle this afternoon. Um, where are we? There for George Scott. Uh, and so it goes on. So th that's how I set it up anyway. At least five runs. Um, if you put 20% in here, then one win out of five, and it, it appears on the report. 25% means if it's only five runs out of the race since, it's got to be two wins. Um, and I tend to look at the 45-day uh, the view. Uh, so that's hot form again today and tomorrow views. Uh, you can clear clear the filters and click update and you'll get more data. And that's those are generic um, controls that you've got. Uh, horses for courses is, uh, well, self-explanatory, I hope. Um, 
it's uh, i mean it's i'd say it's probably little more than an interesting digest i mean sometimes you'd find a you'd find a horse that was um you know had won at big prices a few times like um a couple here and uh, 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 solveig's uh solveig song won again tonight for example he, you know he's all tends to be under bet uh he won the 640 i'm pretty sure uh there we are yep 10 to 1 so that's a nice uh, another nice illustration of of that particular report it's not one i use very much um so i wouldn't i wouldn't be able to steer you directly to a way to use that but i do have it set up um on my let's see if i can get this for you now um in my report angles which of course i'm going to talk about in a moment um i wonder if it's no it hasn't shown up sadly because again because i don't really use use that report but you can set that up and it, it will appear on your um your report angles these red numbers here which we'll come on to so that's horses for courses um quite interesting but not really my thing the next one is the head-to-head -head. Uh, i tend to use that on the race card um this is the report the report view so this is the top down view i tend to use it in a in a bottom up kind of a way let's choose a race uh, a race at david pro but one gg sponsored jockey well done david um by a neck no doubt in a fantastic driving finish from our high class pilot um now what was i actually looking for uh where are what was I looking for? Ah, head to head, yeah. Um, is this embankment? So basically, we've got. If you click, if you click the the button in the top menu, it opens it up for all of the runners, and we've got a head to head icon in our in our series of icons on the on the race card. Um, so here we can see that this is a a two a, a nursery handicap so they, they actually haven't had a lot of opportunity to cross swords in the past um but you can see for instance that swan's swan street has won more than he's lost um and so on uh, and this guy who's an outsider anyway is a is down the hierarchy in this herd um anyway that's that's head to head again it's not a report that i use as a report but i do use the data in the actual race card when i'm looking at a race um i've set this up to show um an important point about the reports uh is that many of them can be used in a negative context as well so for example if you're a layer or you're looking for a short priced horse to oppose you can you can set these up so i'm saying here show me only those horses that have got uh five or less wins where a win is beating another horse um and um it, it's showing me these horses here if you click on a horse it will show you their their lifetime record against the other runners in the race um so you can see in this case this lad's lost plenty um now one final thing to keep in mind here is that 50 percent a 50 percent win rate in the head-to-head -head only means you um you beat as many as beat you so you're not ahead of the game with a 50 percent win rate you want to be looking at sort of 70 75 80 percent um win rate which is to say that you've beaten uh 70 to 70 to 80 percent of your rivals last time out uh, um sorry not last time out it, historically That's, that was a bit garbled i hope that made sense um the best of instant expert is a report that I'm only going to quickly touch on. It's not, it's quite convoluted and um, it's really, it works best if you, if you come into it with a game plan. So if you're looking for a particular thing, like you might be looking for those horses with the best record in today's class, for example, and that's the, these are those. Um, and then what you can do is you can say, right, Prince de Sable, for example, is two from two in this grade. Uh, and you can just look at the rest of its form profile, which is 
quite quite um, compelling. So at the distance, it's um, it's placed six out of six and won four of those in this sort of field size. It's placed five out of five and won three of them. So um, question marks over the course and the going, and um, it ran a very nice race. Finished second today. Um, that's a way to use best of instant expert, uh, which is there. It, it is. There's a lot of a lot of numbers in there and, and a little bit of color to guide, but um, uh, it, it's presented as it is. It's it's one of our oldest reports, and I'm not sure. It's um, I'm sure some people use it religiously, but generally it would be one of the, the less frequented cubby holes of Gigi's gold. I would say. Um, now the rest of the reports certainly down to size snippets one two three four five six the next six reports follow a very similar um style and we'll just look at trainer stats to to illustrate that so um we just clear those filters um i haven't actually talked about the filters yet which is kind of important right so let's let's talk about um Let's talk about what's going on here. Uh, along the top here, we've got a whole bunch of um, uh, filters and some control buttons here. And then we've got some some buttons. The blue buttons allow you to select what information you, you play with. Uh, and then, of course, in the main body of the report, you've got all of the um, <clears throat> all of the data, the, in this case, the 14 day form for today's trainers. Um, so let's, um, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to put some, some parameters into here. So I'm going to say in the last 14 days, I want at least 15 runs from the trainer, a win percent of at least 25% and an AE, my old favorite AE 1.25. And if I click update, I've got no data there. That's fine. That just means that, um, Again, you know, you you could you could um, relax your parameters, or you could say, well, there's just there's there's nothing of um, sufficient note today to justify a bet and move on, um, and that's what I choose to do. So if I do it on the um, on the handicap view, then I've got Gavin Cromwell had a couple of runners at Gowron today, uh, no good, I don't think. Um, So we <clears throat> historically we had four um, periodicities, four buttons for different um, time scales for the data to be uh, considered over. They were fourteen day, thirty day, course one year, and course five year. And we've added um, uh, one year, regardless of course, course agnostic. Um, and you can see that if you whichever button you click, you obviously get different information. So on the course one year one here, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six rows. Um, I can I can reveal the runners for these trainer and track combinations by clicking this show hide in line button. And that brings up all that data and I can hide them again, unsurprisingly like that. So if I just, um, what I tend to do is sort by AE. Um, and here we've got, this horse won, uh, one short, I think it was about two to one in the end. Uh, these two big price horses didn't win. I don't think those two did any good. Uh, this one won four to one in the end and so on. Um, what I really want to show you is let's just close those and I just open that top one here. This little um, arrow up, if you click on that, that will show you the constituent runs for this so Evan Williams at Exeter in the last year has had 16 runners, six of which are one and another one placed. There's the win in each way and so on. Clicking on this reveals those 16 horses. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. Good. Um, so that's all very well. Uh, and it's sorted in um, chronological order. So you can see whether he had all those winners a while back or if they're well distributed or if they're more recent. Um, if you wanted to look for, uh, 
if you wanted to look at similarities between the winners, you could sort by position. So you can sort on the headers here, and we can see that the, the six winners are here. Um, Miss I. Williams has written a couple of them. I presume that's the daughter. I, I don't really know. Um, anyway, so uh, and they were at prices. She's clearly, um, she's probably under bet because people don't know her. <laughs> I certainly don't. Um, and uh, evidently she's capable of getting the job done. So that's worth knowing. That's good information that uh, the the Williamses, Evan and Miss I, um, uh, are a capable combo. So that's that's perhaps something to take out of the video tonight. Um, Adam Wedge and Connor Ring do most of the steering and um, uh, they unsurprisingly are responsible for some of these winners here. Now, they've got quite a good spread of um, starting prices as well from nine to four all the way up to 16 to one. So you couldn't really discount them on the basis of, of price either. Um, that's an interesting combination and um, certainly one to, to keep an eye on at um, at Exeter. As you may have just seen there, if I click on the row, and this is true for any of the reports, if you click on the row, it will take you to the actual um, <clears throat> to the actual racing question. Uh, we can see here that I'm still believing one. And we can also see there was a trainer track stats horse today. So that was good. Marvellous. Uh, had a very slow start and uh, slightly starting to hit stride now. So that's good news. Um, we can also see that there are some red numbers in these boxes, which I'm going to come on to in a minute. So that is um, that is uh, trainer statistics. Now, I don't really need to show you jockey statistics because it's more of the same. Uh, what I will do, because I didn't, I didn't mention it there, um, is I'll just touch on this CSV button here. Now this enables you whatever you've whatever you've put in your selection here. Let me just um, if I clear that, I get a lot more data into the into the report. And if I click the CSV button, it's going to um, unsurprisingly produce a CSV for me, which I can open. And again, this is this is something that I don't <clears throat> I don't personally use because I just take the, the data directly from the report. But um, plenty of people do use this. So what we've got is let me see if I can make this a little bit bigger so it's a bit um, easier to see. And what I'll also do is I'll just um, I'll just insert a row here and move that down there so we're not so we don't get confused so we're just looking at this top stuff so <clears throat> essentially here we've got dane o'neill and um the what we have exported was the 14 day jockey stats data i'll just get dane o'neill here a minute so we can see what we're talking about uh where is he dane o'neill there he is and we can see he had two runners at Newcastle today there. Um, and those two runners are presented on different lines. So this first, the first part of the data to here, this part, is essentially um, this row here, the, the, the white row, the summary data row. The second part, and the reason why you see the summary data twice, is because this is the horse specific data. Now, unfortunately, Excel chooses to turn form into a date format, which is unhelpful. So that was six hyphen one eight. Um, uh, but anyway, th th this this part is is the constituent it, uh, are today's runners essentially. So in this case, um, two runners at Newcastle, Turgeman and Katie Lee, and that is what we have here. So that's how that report works some people like to um, slice and dice the data themselves uh, and they're very welcome to do that by using the csv export function okay good that's that so i don't want to say anything more about the um the jockey report it's got the same five periodicities the controls are the same at the top the today tomorrow stuff is the same 
as um, trainer stats and also um, trainer jockey combo, which is a very, very popular report and one of my personal favorites as well. I have it set up pretty much like this. Um, <clears throat> I tend to use 1.25 for most things on the AE. Uh, it strikes a balance between being selective but not too selective. Um, I'd be more flexible with the runs and win percentages, and sometimes I'd introduce some other things here, like a, I might put in a, a zero for each way percentage, which would lose this bottom line here um, and that winner as it happens. Um, <clears throat> but <coughs> excuse me, this is um, trainer jockey combo is a is a terrific report, and uh, you know there's always there's always winners somewhere on here. As everything, there are always losers as well. So you kind of got to you've got to be somewhat selective with the data. Um, and again, we're using this information as a starting point, not an end point. So um, you kind of you know it's flagging up horses some of which are at nice prices and then we've got to go and look at the race and determine uh whether it's something that we actually um you know whether the rest of the race setup suits now in the case of aiden o'brien and shamey heffernan uh they're obviously in very good form at the moment seven winners from 25 in the last fortnight that's eight now because it's albuquerque won well backed from nines into sixes um, had a good draw, draw so important at Garen. Um, you look at some of the results today and you see the big fields and the impact of a low draw, really important. And again, that's something that's uh, very well advertised on um, on Gigi's race cards. Just very quickly showcase that. So this is a, this was a 15 runner maiden. It was actually yielding, good to yielding in places. Um, this is today's, race but we can see that um <clears throat> essentially all the winds and uh, are, are low um place is interesting there um i was on the uh, i was on low drawn horses all day and uh it, it served very well um uh, john gosden at yarmouth three runners today second first second very, and, and the second and the two seconds were beaten. I think it was a head and a neck. Um, so that was a bit unlucky. Um, no, sorry, this handmaiden was third. I beg your pardon. I'm thinking of another horse. This Usel Falls was second, beaten a neck. Uh, Joseph O'Brien, that one, backed into favourite. This one was second, did very well to finish second from a bad draw. Um, still well in, probably go close to winning next time if it has a decent draw. Um, this one was nowhere, and again, a winner out of those two there. Um, so TJ Combo is a, it's a terrific report. It's a favourite of mine um, and a favourite of a lot of people's, I think. How are we doing? Right, we got down to here. Now, the next few are quite uh, are kind of niche. They're all trainer, trainer niches. So we've got first run in a handicap, trainer change, and first start as a two-year-old. Um, they all follow the same principles again so i'm not going to um i'm not going to labor the point um i set this up i tend to set it up either on two year or course five year there wasn't much to look at today um this sploosh hasn't run yet ness of broad goals a hundred to one shot and i think it ran like one um on the course five year purgatory was placed rowan was a, oh yeah but um Actually, this is something to note as well. The way I've got this set up, we've got we've got uh, entries here where there's actually there's only one win, and you know, like this, not it doesn't that doesn't really mean anything. We're, as with everything with horse racing data, we're pretty much always working with very small data sets. But this is these are small to the point of meaningless. So I would immediately ignore one from you know one win out of a small sample that, that that's that's not going to send you the direction you want to go in um these other two were slightly more interesting particularly in the fact you know they're they're kind of place percentages um so they were more more worthy of a second glance um and this one was unplaced this one was third obviously step forward on its on its maiden form ostensibly at least 
um, and he's now six places from 11 runs, Chris Wall at Kempton. So that's a report I, I like to look at. Um, generally, there's nothing there, so I wouldn't have backed any of these today. Um, but I, I would have looked at the Chris Wall horse. Um, uh, I would certainly have looked at that in the race, but it was a it wasn't a race that I wanted to bet in. The the other two um, trainer changed nothing of note on there today, and two year old first start. Let's have a quick look at this one. Again, I tend to set it up with two year form, uh, and I have um, AE one point two five. I want a few runs in there. Um, the Chapel Hyam's win percentage is quite low, and um, so I, I, I mean, it's a fifty to one shot. Um, you know, and probably ignore that as a matter of course. Anyway, I I do like to back a big priced horse, but uh, not not typically first first time out as a two year old. I th if a horse is fifty to one first time out as a two year old, it it is not expected. Um, if you saw a bit of money for it into twenties, then you might you might have a second glance, but that's a no. Um, this lad ran second, I think, uh, in Kempton this evening, about an hour and a half ago. Yeah, he was beaten half a length. So <clears throat> he's run a, a very solid race, and his chance was advertised on the two-year-old first start report. Um, this one was well backed. It wasn't far away, but I think it was off the board in the two o'clock. Yeah, I think it might have been fifth or sixth. Um, the other one, I don't know. Nowhere, I don't think. Um, so that's that's that report. Now, what I really want to get to is these these three down the bottom here. Um, sire snippets and trainer snippets, they set themselves up differently from the other reports in that all of the data in these reports relates to a two-year time frame. So the buttons here are not periodicities. Instead, they are um, contexts, if you like. So um, this is set up with some... Um, some filters in it which is actually filtered out all the data today and indeed tomorrow um, <clears throat> but if i put it on one of the uh the sub subtypes got race type here um and that's a hundred to one shot so that's a <laughs> bad example um we've got a couple here on age range that come up against these this is this ae of 1.5 that that is extremely selective <laughs> Um, with in, in combination with the win percent and runs, but particularly this AE of 1.5. So we've got a couple of sires that pop up on this particular um, flag, and um, I don't think Faldo did anything. Uh, this Art of America might, might have gone okay. Um, yeah, that won at 5 to 1, won, won quite nicely. So um, again, that's... Um, sire... I, I, I do. I really like sire data, and I particularly like it when there's not a huge amount of form to go on. Now, this guy looks like he's had a few goes, um, and unless he was trying something different today, um, I probably wouldn't be using sire data as an in. Um, but again, I haven't looked at the race in detail. It might be that he was stepping up in trip, or um, you know, some, something else was was a change of circumstance today where you might want to look towards the sire to get a, a, a pointer um I, I i the horse won but i can't i can't claim any credit for showcasing that because um i don't know what the race setup was there anyway it is a good report and uh, and it's always throws up um a few interesting snippets so there's one tomorrow fame and glory who was a a wonderful staying horse on the flat unsurprisingly is producing a lot of um bumper winners uh, very high strike rate and um, you know some of them going off at nice prices as well and tomorrow he's got one at Fontwell which is a nice price it's having its third go so again you know it's kind of like it, it, it might not be very good it's already had two tries we're not we're not probably looking to the sire information to tell us where we are with this one if it was first time out then um, we, we might be uh, more interested in this uh, this information but he's had two goes it looks like he's going to be or she uh, is going to be running in novice hurdle soon and then attempting to get a mark um, and and 
knowing Kim Bailey is very good first time in a handicap, she might end up finding a race that she can win in that context in due course. Uh, so that is sire snippets. Trainer snippets is very similar, but it has a lot more, uh, a lot more of these buttons here. I'm not going to go through all of them, but you can see that um, we've got race type, distance range, distance move, which is interesting. Last time out, winner, first start, second start, trainer change, uh, off a layoff, essentially, 60 plus days, and running back quick, seven minus days. Also, the handicap button. Now, for most of these, it doesn't make a difference. It just refines the data from all races to just handicaps. But with first and second start, um, it changes quite significantly. So if I select first start, this is Charlie Appleby's um, first starter. So summer flare had never run before. But if I put that first start on a handicap, it might not bring up any data. I'll just clear that. And then, and then we've got these. So we're now getting horses with form. So this horse has run three times before, but today it's running in a handicap for the first time. So that's, with these two buttons changing between all and handicap makes a material difference to the data within the report with all of the other buttons changing from all to a handicap produces a subset of the all races information which is um, relevant to handicaps i hope that makes sense uh, and again with second start um, Quite interesting second start. I think I think uh, a few a few savvy people are cottoning on to first time in a handicap and trainers that excel with that. But very few are, and, and you know, usual usual reason the data is not widely available or even uh, narrowly available. Um, it is available on our site. Um, second start in a handicap is quite a quite a potent angle, uh, and it's well worth looking out for. How are we doing? Are we doing okay? It's, it's nine o'clock, so I've kind of, um, I'm supposed to have finished now, and I haven't, and I haven't finished my wine either because I've been talking too much. Um, so that's bad news twice. Uh, what I'm going to do, this the, the, the bit that I really wanted to show you is, um, well, I really wanted to show you all of it, but I particularly want to show you the report angle stuff. Now, this is Everything that I've shown you so far would, if you wanted to um, to consume all of that, if you wanted to digest all of that information, you'd have to go and check all of the reports. And that is obviously um, significantly time consuming. And, you know, we're all of us pushed for time, uh, whether we've got two hours or or 15 minutes to look at the form, we're all pushed for time and we have to choose our battles. So I think the thing that, that Gigi's Gold does better than any other website. Um, one of the things that it does better than any other website is, uh, is it shortcuts um, a lot of the things that we would otherwise have to spend more time doing. And the report, uh, the reporting is one such shortcut. I'm going to go back to my screen share now and show you how this works. So let's go to report angles now if you go down the list here the old reports list to my report angles you'll see this little this one over here my report angles settings i'm just going to show you that first so it looks like this so you've got, kind of got um you've got the report some report names on the left hand side You've got a few uh, um, global settings at the bottom and a couple of settings on the side. Now, the content in the main box relates to, let me just, um, let's just grab a report so I can show you. So this is the trainer jockey combo stats and I'll just pull that up on here, TJ combo. And you can see that we've got, we've got these five buttons here and we've got these variables here. So <clears throat> before we did report angles, if you wanted to set up each of the, the periodicity sub reports, so for instance, 14 day form and course five year form, if you wanted to set these up with different variables at the top, you'd have to 
change the variables, update, and and it was really a, quite a cumbersome process. I mean, you know, standard practice and and um, anywhere else that you were doing that, you'd have you'd have the same. Uh, it would be the same effort intensive uh, procedure. But what we've done now is we've you can essentially set things up once in your report angle settings and granted to go through all of these and set it up it does take depends depends how much of an idea you've got in your head but maybe it takes 15 20 minutes maybe it takes half an hour maybe it takes 10 minutes um it doesn't really matter um but once you've set these up and saved your settings that's it you've got your you've got your data then and it will appear in your in a number of places which i'll show you in a second so let's just say in this case um that i wasn't really interested in the 14 day form well actually let's say i wasn't interested in any of it then i could just switch them off so I'd click this off button in the top right corner here and all of the the check boxes have um have been unchecked now i've got to save my settings there which i've done and now on my report angles report um i haven't got any tj combo information now i actually do want tj combo information so i'm going to put that back on and they're checked again and then save the settings and you can go through each of the reports and choose what you want um, and how you want to set it up and whether you want all or handicap and so on and so forth um, including the trainer snippets, which is a little bit more convoluted, obviously. Um, second start in a handicap obviously doesn't have a an all or handicap button, and first start in a handicap isn't on here because it's on. It's got its own report, which again doesn't have the all or handicap option. Um, so, <clears throat> I really would encourage you to take uh, a few moments, as long as it takes you, to set this up, and if you you might not be um you you might not you might not know at what level you want to set these parameters well that's fine um you just there there is some detail in the user guide about some suggested defaults or you can use there's a default button here um so you can reset the default this resets the defaults in this particular report trainer first handicap and this one resets all of the report defaults so um you can you can use those to start with and then you can uh, narrow or broaden the focus as you wish and that's that's how you would set it up now once it's set up then you would go to my report angles and you'd get a report that looks like this again it takes a, a little time to um to load often because it's a big report now nobody can use all of that information it's, it's there's too much information in there and again you know i have an option to um to tighten the focus that's one thing i can do um but the way i consume this information is not via the report i consume it via the um via the race card uh, which I'll show you now. Now, just incidentally, these zeros here are because certain reports don't have AE or IV calculations, and that's the, the hot form and the horses for courses and the head-to-head. -head. They don't have those calculations. But all the ones that do are down here. So if I sort this by AE high to low, I've got Dara Keenan 14-day uh, form. If I just go to a, the 130, I'm looking for Dara, Dara Keenan's horse, um <clears throat> where is he there he is right down the bottom and you can see i've got three i was 66 to one shot but that's irrelevant i've got a three in the box here um and that tells me that he's uh he's a jockey in form in the last 30 days in the last 14 days which is what i saw on here um there's the 30 day line actually there as well and um where are we the uh the trainer is in form in the last month as well against the parameters i've set up uh so that's why there isn't a a green 30 for trainer form here because i've set up different parameters than those um which which constitute getting uh, the 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 30 day form symbol on the race card 
Uh, again, I hope that makes sense. So um, there are three report angles for this particular horse. And what I would generally do is I just click the red question mark in the top row here. And if there's a zero in the box, nothing happens. But where there's a number in the box, um, we get this inline form that shows me which of my um, which of my report angles, that's all of this data here, uh, is relevant to the given runner. So you can see that there's a, a line for Chomburi, there's a line for Kafuk, there's a line for Fancy Flyer, one for Swiss Peak, two for I'm Freezing, and um, three for Princess Florence. And you can see they're all different things. We've got trainer and jockey stats here. We've got uh, trainer first handicap here. Um, we've got uh, jockey stats and trainer stats on the course periodicities. We've got a hot form, a couple of hot form ones here. So all different stuff, which... Um, I may very well have missed, if I'm looking at the race cards, which I generally am, I may very well not have been aware that Chon Bori had run in a in a, a hot form race last time out. Um, it looks like it's that race there. And um, I may have not been aware that uh, Ed Walker has a terrific um, record first time in a handicap. Actually, I would have known that because I'd have got it from the trainer form here. Um, but... It's really, really useful, this stuff. So um, one thing that we were requested was to add odds to this report. And as you can see here, uh, we are working on that request at the moment. Um, it, it's a very cluttered report, but I think we'll get to a point um, where it's usable. It, 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 it's a very busy report, um, <clears throat> but I think I, I, I definitely see the value of having odds on it, and um, and so that's why we've we're working on that. That'll probably be live. I'm loath to put anything live while I'm away, which is from Sunday. So, um, um, yeah, probably the week after next. Realistically. Um, it's better to be safe than sorry, but be assured if you wanted this data on the report angles report, uh, it will be available very soon. So that is it. Now, there is one other report on here, which is QT angles. I'm not going to talk about that tonight, A, because I've waffled on long enough, and B, because QT stands for query tool, and that's what we're going to cover next time. Um, so if you're still there, you deserve some sort of a medal for your uh, stamina and sticking power. Um, I hope, let's just check in the box here, down here. Um, I hope you've, uh, there's been some value in my waffling. Is there videos to take all this in, Matt? Yes, there are, Tej. Um, start with the first two of these again i'll put the um i'll put the links somewhere where you can get them um and there's loads of other videos on your my ggs page do have a look at my ggs there's lots of stuff on there that um even if you've been a subscriber for a long time you may have just um have bit you got kind of immunized to the fact that it's there and you just you just go and do your stuff if you're if you if you want to try something different, there's some some very good video content on there. There's stuff around pace, particularly um, the first two videos in this series. If you've not looked at them, do look at them, please. I think um, everybody who's been kind enough to contact me has said that there's been something that you know, even as a long time subscriber, um, there's been something new for them or something that they'd historically overlooked or whatever. So I would encourage you to do that. Um, I've managed to get this down to 75 minutes from 90 last time. So that's it's not quite as good as the 60 I was hoping for, but it's certainly a step in the right direction. The last one, I'm not really sure how long it's going to be because I, I want to show you query tool in, in, in some little detail. Um, but I also want to kind of tie everything together as best I can and show you how to, to use the reports and the race cards and the query tool and everything um, holistically. Um, without it taking up all of your life to do that. And and that's the whole point about this. Again, you know, I say it every week. It's really important to keep this in mind. There is, there, there is so much stuff 
inside gold, which is brilliant. There's something for everyone, but nobody uses everything. Please don't get overwhelmed. Please just start with something that's familiar to you and then kind of develop, move forward from there. So step forward from there. Um, take it piece by piece. I would really encourage you to look at the draw and pay stuff. I think that's, um, I, I, you know, no uh, no apology needed for labouring that. I think uh, even since we last spoke, its utility has been uh, once again emphasised. Um, these horses are still going off big prices. You know, it won't last forever, but it probably will last for the next um, two or three, maybe four years. There'll be they'll 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 be going off at bigger prices than they should do um so that's definitely something to get your head around uh trainer stuff is important get get familiar with the race card in a way that suits you um and um yeah and and kind of interleave additional features and functions as and when time allows don't try to um don't try to force it and also, um, don't feel that if you if you don't get instant success with something, it doesn't mean it doesn't work. Um, you know, we we'll, the, the whole the whole point of these tools is to try to highlight value, to identify things that maybe the market hasn't quite cottoned onto yet. And um, you know, if you if your value is um, it's a six to one shot that should be a four to one shot. It's still going to lose most of the time, right? And you just, it's, it's going to lose kind of 80% of the time and win 20% of the time. But if you're getting paid out at six to one, um, you're going to end up, you know, kind of 50% ahead of the game over a period of time if you're right about your, your price judgments. Um, so if the first two don't win, it doesn't matter. You know, maybe you made bad calls, but don't, don't, uh, beat yourself up about it get back on the horse keep trying particularly with the draw and pace stuff because it's it, it's really valuable but also with these reports set them up um, have a play around with them individually when you have a chance and then set them up in report angles such that that data is there for you on a day-to-day -day basis without you having to wade through them uh, report by report it's a really powerful shortcutting tool and i hope that it will add value to your wagering uh and that is that for this evening thank you very much as always for joining me and for um for your company i hope you've got some utility out of it um as ever i welcome your feedback so any questions or comments on this please do drop me a line good or bad or even downright ugly um i can take it i've been you know I, <laughs> i'm sure i've been called worse um so please, you know, please do feedback to me with your thoughts and I'll try and um, answer any questions and accommodate your uh, your comments in the next recording, which will probably be this time next week. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great rest of the evening. Bye for now.